you today about how to teach children to work and love it. What we got here is a work crew. This is uh, Justin's family. Justin's in Mexico uh, being treated medically for cancer and, and a couple other things at the same time. He's been there about 10 weeks and uh, five of the kids are staying with us. One of them is working with some a neighbor today. And then uh, these three are helping me with a wood pile. We're gonna be, we're, what we're doing, we're cleaning this out so we can put some hay in here. And then we're gonna take the cedar, red cedar that I've got here. You can see it. And we're gonna take it up to the shop. And we got another pile over there and we got some walnut here. So the, the, I'm gonna teach the kids how to make furniture. So I got a big shop up there. We're cleaning it out. I'm gonna install this up there and plane it all down and then edge it and build some stuff. So the kids are having a great time doing that. I moved away from them because I don't, I don't want to reveal my trade secrets to the fellas, you know. But what this, what this is about is training children to work. <laughs> Today, 95, 98, 99% of the kids coming up are lazy to the bone. They know nothing of working. They weren't taught to work. Back uh, when, I was, when I came along, uh, when I was young, back in the 40s and 50s, uh, every kid worked. I mean, we had jobs to do, and I, I'd go with my daddy on Saturday and work all day long when I was eight years old on a job painting, and by the time I was 15 or 16, he used my summers. I had to go work with him. I got 50 cents an hour uh, painting and scraping and uh, hot, sticky, nasty weather. And when I ran out of something to do, painting, my daddy brought home a bunch of broken concrete slab and said, we're gonna build a fence, to separate us from the neighbor. And I spent the whole summer and into the fall mixing concrete, making, mix, taking sand, cement, mixing up mortar and laying those stone double wide till they came up together. Fence about that tall, about every 12 feet was a big square column about like that. And I got through with it, thought I was through, and he said, now I want you to mix up some stains and go by and stain every once in a while different stones and make it look more like real stones, some kind of pinky stains and stuff like that, brown stains. I did, and amazingly, it looked just everybody thought it was a real stone wall. Now, these boys, uh, what I find, it kind of re it refreshes my memory of what it's like training kids, especially boys, to work. Uh, it's been so long since I did it. My kids are 40 and 50 years old now. Uh, and they're all hard workers, every one of them. Uh, three of uh, the five are entrepreneurs. Uh, two of the girls are not, but due to the husbands they married, but the, even they are, are very productive. Now, uh, how do you get kids to work? How do you get them to enjoy work? How do you get it to be part of their character? Number one is you work with them. You don't send them out to do a hard, nasty, hot job and work miserably. Uh, these boys will help me from about eight in the morning till about 12 or one when we go in to eat dinner. And then I give them the afternoon off to go swimming. And if they're not having fun when they're working, then it's a failure. Now there'll be times when you gets to be hot and tired and you're tired and they're hot and tired and you'd all like to quit and they know there's a need to keep working, that's fine. But when, when they get grouchy or complaining, they feel like you've made slaves out of them, then it's not profitable anymore. Work for kids, kids love to be productive. They love to make things happen. They love to see things develop. Just some kind of routine, uh, miserable work wouldn't be satisfying to them. But where they see they're building something, they're accomplishing something, then they love it. They love it better than they do play. And uh, so work with your kids. 
Uh, work with them. If you don't have a job for them to do, create one. Uh, start some project in the yard or on the farm, whatever. Something that uh, digging up some old shrubs, planting some new ones, making it look pretty, uh, lining the garden, building a garden, making a fence between you and the neighbor, remodeling the garage, even if you remodeled it last year. Something you need to do with them to where they feel accomplished. You do that, they'll be happy. Never allow your kids to be bored. These guys right here, they, they're either working or they're playing. And when I say playing, they're playing hard, like swimming in the creek, swinging on ropes, riding their bicycles like crazy. I never allow them to hang around the house during the daytime, to sit in their rooms, to look at digital media or anything like that. In the evening, by about seven o'clock, they come in from heavy activity. By eight o'clock, they, they hang out for about an hour, cleaning up, getting ready for bed. At eight o'clock, we have a Bible study and prayer, and then they hang out with each other till about nine o'clock talking. And at nine o'clock, they go to sleep, wake up in the morning, another day of work and hard play all day long. Never an idle moment. If you'll teach your kids to work they'll not have bad attitudes unless you've got a bad attitude. Now, if you've got a bad attitude and you crouch at them and you complain and you threaten them and you might, you diminish them as a person, uh, demean them, then boy, you're raising a little tyrant. You're raising a terrorist. But if you're having fun, they're having fun. You got a good attitude. They'll have a good attitude and they'll be raised up to be men that are hardworking, entrepreneurial, and just love life in general. So that's what I want to talk to you about. Look at those little animals out there. Where they're having fun. Would you believe that? <laughs> now, I know you say, my kids are 7, 8, 9, 10, 12 years old. They wouldn't have fun. No, if you just sent them out in the hot weather to do something like that, they wouldn't. But if you go out there with them, and there's a purpose. See, they know that that cedar that they're sorting right now, we're going to take it to the shop, and we're going to plane it all down. And we're going to cut it into strips. And then I'm going to say, what do you want to make? Chester drawers? Uh, uh, what? I'm going to make a coffin for myself. But they're, <laughs> they're going to make something. I don't know what. But they'll, ha they'll come up with some idea. Now, I will cut, I'll cut on the power tools, the big power tools for them. But I'll find every way I can to, to allow them to, to work with the tools and, and still be safe. The two little ones standing there, that's, that's Gabe's kids. And, they like to just hang out with the guys working, but give them a couple of years and they'll be working too. All right, that's what I want to say to you today, and I'm going to get back to it. We've got a whole lot of work to do today before dinner time.